Okay, uh, the talk is called JavaScript Gone Wild. I will ask again, how many people get the cultural reference here? It's a parody on something. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I have some people who know about this. So, <laughs> that, huh? it's, it's cultural. It's, 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 a, it's an American, American cultural icon, okay? The uh, reference I'm trying to point to is that uh, there are this series of uh, videos, website, DVDs about something called Girls Gone, Gone Wild, which is popular in the US. The important part to get from that is that uh, the whole premise of the USP of those DVD series or whatever is that uh, it's supposed to be unexpected. They don't know what they're going to shoot next because it's unscripted. Okay, it's a little too abstract, but whatever. I wanted to try all these jazzy text effects. There's a warning. I am warning you, the content of the code is not safe for work. I'm being absolutely clear about it. Okay, so the content, okay, but uh, you will learn something interesting. Some of you may already be using this, but I just wanted to you know, try this. The content of the code is not safe for work. So if you go back and you want to try this on your website or your friend's website or some other website which you do not own or, you know, you're not authorized to look at, then uh, it's kind of illegal in India. So get your permissions in place. Everyone clear about the NSFW? There are no dirty pictures. It does not have any dirty pictures. That's from a movie which is going to release next month or something. It's got Vidya Balan in it. And it's light on technical content. It's a different kind of presentation. Uh, I might like really, you know, uh, fail at this. It might bomb completely. But I'm guessing you guys have fun. You laugh. And it's important. It's a, it's a session after lunch. That's actually, a, uh, you know, the bottom half of Miller's Light, which is a beer in the US, if you want to do know. Why bother? If it's light on technical content, there are no dirty pictures, the content of the code is not safe for work, why bother? Okay, uh, what I'm trying to do is like uh, plant a seed of an idea, which is from another Hollywood movie, Inception. You can see the totem, it doesn't look that good right now, but... Whatever. It's from this movie called Inception, which had a bunch of things. There are theories around what really happened in the movie. They were like dream, 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 whatever. But, uh, you know, a lot of you, uh, almost all of you are developers. Uh, I guess there are more server-side developers who do JavaScript than purely front-end JavaScript developers. But uh, JavaScript is a very powerful language. And uh, some people might not agree. They think that Flash is also important in, in this uh, whole thing, but whatever. <laughs> so, since he mentioned Silver, are you still working for Microsoft? <laughs> he used to. So, uh, Microsoft ships this, uh, you know, new OS called Windows 7, and mostly you get the 64-bit edition. And you know what with, uh, what's with Silverlight? If you go to a Microsoft.com uh, page where they want you to install the plugin for Silverlight and then you click on that link to say install, then you get to this other page where it says, sorry, this, this plugin doesn't work in 64-bit operating systems. <laughs> so it's kind of like a non-starter right now. Okay? Come in, come in. We haven't done anything important yet. So the interesting thing is... Uh, I would like to cover something which maybe a lot of you don't really think about because you're really busy with your continuous integration and you know your test suits and a bunch of other cool things, especially Node.js. Do you want to close the door? What is the idea I'm going to plant? Oh, it looks, it looks better on my screen, okay? I don't know what goes wrong here. Uh, the idea is JavaScript code showing up in unexpected places can have unintended consequences. That's it. You know, that's all the gyan I have. 
uh, rest is all about you know shoring this up. So if you have another talk, you can please you know give me a plus one and go. Okay, I'm making it efficient. And the important part is, if unexpected places and unintended consequences, that's not a bad thing. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that can you have fun and somehow profit from that? Okay. See, a lot of you are intrigued now. You're like really thinking this is like a how to become a millionaire kind of talk or something. It can be. <clears throat> a lot of uh, people in Eastern Europe have become rich because of this. Simply because of JavaScript. Not silver light. <laughs> Maybe flash. But definitely because of JavaScript. And anyone who's run a website for some time, uh, maybe like you know three four years uh, anyone uh, who has like multiple websites uh, and does not have a lot of technical resources has faced issues of security uh, and maybe you know they had bugs in their SQL code or whatever uh, might be familiar with this okay the important and the operative words are unexpected places now that's what I'm going to talk about maybe you have not really thought about this or maybe you're already doing this you're the expert Please jump in, but you know that's the interesting part about uh, why I like JavaScript at all. Trivia question first: Do you know who this is? Do you know the movie? Yeah. What's the name? Someone said yes. <laughs> it's a. <m> <laughs> Oh yes, brilliant. That's the only relation it has. Okay, I just added this slide. I needed some extra content. <laughs> yeah, well done. Cool. So, <laughs> the movie is called Major League, and uh, uh, this guy is like kind of half blind in the movie, and uh, he's in a baseball team which kind of sucks. And uh, then finally, the coach realizes that he can't see who is you know who he's pitching to. He's supposed to be a pitcher, like the guy with. I mean, in America they just throw the ball, right? There's no balling and all. So uh, they make him wear these uh, ugly glasses, but then he becomes like a super ass, kick ass pitcher and they start calling him wild thing. The only reason it's I've added this is because JavaScript gone wild. So my wild idea number one. How many of you have tried this? Anyone? Okay. You're a paranoid. What? Why wouldn't it work? Yeah, I mean that's the example I have. I have limited JavaScript skills. I'm starting with that. Okay, that's why it's light on technical content. So what are we doing? We are sealing a session cookie. What a session cookie does is allow your snazzy, you know, nice web apps to have uh, authenticated users because HTTP is stateless. Anyone disagrees with that? So all this code does is that, I, I don't know if it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. So I have a, uh, I control a domain called evil.cxm and my uh, script is called, you know, conveniently cookie stealer. And all I do is uh, create an iframe and, you know, point the source to that. So if this gets executed in any user's context, which means that when they load some website and this JavaScript gets executed, this request, which is, which is basically a get request, will get logged in their web server logs, in my web server logs, sorry. Okay, and the part about, uh, that's just the DOM create, whatever you call it. Uh, you can have, you know, it, it can be a, you can even like redirect directly with a location dot something. But in this sense, if you set the width and the height of the iframe to 0, 0, so it's kind of invisible, right? So in any place where you're able to inject JavaScript or you have a code where, you know, JavaScript can be injected, a uh, cookie can be stolen. If someone steals a cookie, they can, you know, hijack the session. How? They can just create the same cookie in their browser and log in. Uh, there was this tool called uh, Firefox extension called Firesheep. How many of you have tried that? 
Okay, bunch of people. Uh, it was doing exactly this. You know, it was doing a session hijacking, which is like taking the cookie and, you know, doing all the hard work for you so that you can log into your friend's Facebook or whatever you're doing. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about session hijacking. That's just an extra uh, piece of information. The stealing the cookie is session hijacking, so that's what it was doing. How are you trying to inject this in the actual... I mean, there's no way to inject this from your side in the context of the page that's being loaded from that domain, from the legit domain. If there are a bunch of ways to do it. If a website has persistent uh, XSS, I could do that. I could create a link which someone could load in their browser. I could send that link to them. There are a bunch of ways. But right now I'm not trying to talk about how you would inject, but like what you could do with the JavaScript after that. Or you could just create a bookmark and just code Yes, sir. That's the the wild thing in some sense, right? That's the hacky yeah. part. Yeah. This is more about like what do you do with the, the JavaScript? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It may not be an ad to bookmark, it's just, uh, you know, uh, a tiny URL you create which you share on Facebook or something. Could be anything. So, but you can't copy paste JavaScript for this bookmark in the browser. No, you can always drag it to your bookmarks too. So the idea is working. That's a wild idea number one. Uh, this is today morning. Okay. If you have a login form and if you have, uh, uh, you know, if you can inject JavaScript there, you can essentially uh, repoint the action of the form to a domain that you control and submit it back to this domain. And uh, I was looking for a screenshot and uh, this is something that I found in the morning. It's still there. What? See, it's, it's pretty clear. The, uh, the logo is there on the image. It's kind of blurred. <laughs> I just made a request like that. And, and the, uh, the alert basically says JavaScript gone wild. It was just something that I thought was fun at that time. Whatever. Uh, so this is the other wild idea. It's like if you can inject, uh, if you have what we call XSS in your login form, or it could be a registration form. Something similar can be done, right? Uh, you can seal the username password, and then you don't have to do the hard work of sealing the session and recreating it and doing the hijacking and all that. Then you just have the username password and clear text with you. Uh, any questions about this? Okay. There's another wilder idea. I have seen this happen in uh, a lot of uh, stealing the Google page rank. Now the code isn't proper. This value is different. Okay, this is just for clarity. But what happens is when someone uh, searches for this site in Google. They get the link. You, it could be the top link, so which means there is some Google page rank attached to that. And uh, that's, I think, a value between uh, zero, 1 to 9 or 1 to 10. And uh, based only if you're coming from Google, you're redirected. <coughs> okay, so what it's essentially doing is stealing your page rank, the Google page, page rank. Okay, but uh, do you guys just, you know, ever check that, that how does my site look? from, you know, when I go from Google or something. So that's another wild idea. JavaScript makes it possible. You can also do it in uh, other server-side ways. But since this is about JS Foo, so, you know, we'll, we'll stick to that. And it's not very difficult to do, basically, if you're able to inject the JavaScript. Again. Uh, have you ever encountered this? Everyone? No? So uh, this is what happens when you use uh, either uh, Firefox or Chrome because they subscribe to something called savebrowsing.org, which has a database of sites which might be serving uh, malware. 
and uh, was there a question? Okay. So, so the wilder idea still is, what if the JavaScript, rather than you know redirecting to another page to steal Google Page Rank, redirects you to uh, you know a page which is which will allow downloading of some malicious software. Okay. And again, this JavaScript will enable this. It's as simple as that. There are server-side ways of doing this, but uh, a small piece of JavaScript can enable this as well. A lot of attacks that happen where you know uh, hundreds of sites or thousands of sites get infected, or like a shared host gets infected, this kind of link gets added. And the users of these pages, uh, when they visit these websites, get redirected, and then, you know, if the software gets downloaded, then maybe they'll get a uh, virus or something. Uh, okay. Uh, another idea, which is the wildest one, you can log into an internal router. I mean, I'm using ADSL because most of our broadband connections are ADSL routers. When you're using a default username and password, okay, so if you have a broadband internet connection, and you have not changed uh, the, you know, I'm guessing all of you have done, done that because you're all very smart people. But some people don't change the user default username password uh, for the website with, which manages the router. Okay? And uh, in a lot of cases, it's usually a subnet uh, or a network address of 192.168.1.0 or, uh, you know, 0, 0.0. And again, it can be a get request in any other way, but a lot of times, how it happens is using JavaScript, where you just set the documental location and you can log in. Because that's basic uh, HTTP authentication happening right there. Anyone who's not changed their default username and password? And then willing to admit that? <laughs> I, I guess that's one way to be secure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this. Again, this is known to happen. I have tried it a couple of times. I mean, it works with uh, my ATL uh, router. But even if you change your password, let's say you log into uh, the page, if browsers tend to save that password, right? It's basically HTTP based authentication, it saves it. But after that, you go to the end, there's a certain password. Just say, do you want to take one more? There is someone who would like to answer your question. No. You just need to open your browser, go to some evil website, and where this thing will work. Okay, I'll tell you. So this attack has been there since 2007. You need to be a little louder. Yeah, so this attack has been there since 2007, and Jeremy and Rossman sort of discovered this and yeah. publicized it. So what happens once you start logging, right? The next part is you start changing a router password or to try and get into your home network. Yeah. So you do that by, since you know the endpoints of various routers, you can sort of guess which router it is and put yourself in the DMZ. So you can start accessing that router from outside That's and then take only Which, which, uh, which ADSL router have you seen with any CISO protection ever? I am yet to see anyone, any any router with that. Why? 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 Why can't you submit a form? You can submit a form with JavaScript, right? But I have seen a lot of people not change their default username password. So then, so. Once you get into the DMZ, you can sort of take care of hijacking the network. You can Start disable the firewall. Why? This is a direct request. It runs in the context of the user's computer because JavaScript is executing in the user's computer. You can disable the firewall. You can change the DNS record.
now you can start adding a CSS yes, protection. CSS protection will happen on the subsequent pages because when you log in, it will send you a delete identifier which you have to pass in subsequent requests, right? You have that. If this succeeds, all subsequent forms have been submitted to. Right. You can start attacking. No, but how will. Uh, the first page is not going to work. It's not going to work. For a check on a CSS, it's not going to work. You can't. What's your internet connection? The CSR, XSRF or CSRF is post login. It assumes your login is already done. So if you are able to do a login, why do I need to have an admin or an admin password supplying the URL? These are things the user is already logged into the login. If the user is already logged in, then it is CSR. And then if CSR protection exists, then you will not be able to do any subsequent steps. No, the, the thing is, if you send this request where it, the user is already logged in, uh, it will still go to the page. No, that, that's assuming the username password, password works. works. Password. Yeah, obviously. You're, you're talking about a scenario where the user has already saved his username and password, or already has a session. Yeah. Yes, in that situation, if there is CSR protection on the router, you can't do anything subsequent. Yeah. But he's saying that he's starting from a fresh login. Because he knows the username and password. And if he does a full fresh login, then, then he's the one who's going to take the CSR token from the server. I mean, if I'm going to... You say document and token is going to log in to which is the router's login, right? You don't run the JavaScript unless it's there's an exception that like one equation of the same one. No, 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 no. We, uh, we open a lot of web pages. We go to a lot of websites. If you load a page which has this, it doesn't have to be an XSS. A lot of people don't use something like NoScript. By default, they trust the JavaScript they get from multiple domains on a page. right? So if that happens, then a login will uh, go through. And you Okay, I have to move on. I have to move on. I'm I'm really happy we are discussing. That was the idea. So this, uh, since he mentioned uh, Jeremiah uh, Grossman, this is a, a, a screenshot from one of the presentations he has done, where using the script tag and you know in the source just putting the uh, IP address. Like if we assume that the uh, network subnet is 192.168.201.0 that's the network address just sending you know doing a loop of uh, with the script ad, uh, uh, source he's figured out if web server is running on port 80 or not okay if web server is running uh, the script source will get html rather than some javascript and it will give an error if you handle the error Again, it's an assumption because it's like a remote, uh, you know, attack. But you can do that. The other is something called history stealing, which has become, kind of become a little popular. More people know about it now because of I blame Reddit for that. But whatever, uh, it, it's been there for a long time. Again, why? Because we tend to trust the JavaScript which comes from different pages. Uh, uh, you know, there are times when there are popular websites they run their own ad servers. And I can't. Uh, do you guys remember what's our open source uh, ad server? OpenX, open X, right? Open X. Yeah. So they uh, they've had like a couple of uh, exploits in their code which are not fixed for like over three months. So when when an ad server gets hacked and those ads are being served from another page, JavaScript can again get you know come to your uh, browser. It will get executed, which is why I said JavaScript is very powerful. You are allowing untrusted code to execute in your browser, right? And it's in the context of your computer. So it, if your computer can reach another IP address, then you know the JavaScript can reach another IP address because it can make these requests. And it becomes, uh, I think, it becomes a little uh, uh, shady with when you enable XHR as well, right? And I guess uh, you guys are better at writing these AJAX requests than I am. So there are two things they're showing here. One is being able to figure out what are the internal web servers. Now, what you do with those internal web servers is a separate discussion. The second is what are the kind of websites you visit, right? And uh, since we're talking about this, uh, as far as uh, this attack is concerned, it was first detected 
being used by a lot of pornography websites to figure out what kind of content to be served if you, you know, somehow stumble on a pornography website and if you've visited something before. It's called a history stealing attack based on the color of a visited link being different from an unvisited link. Yeah, I know, I read about that, but uh, again, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that these browsers are not updated and all that, so. Allowing untrusted code in the browser is not the smartest thing to do. So use Firefox, use no script. And if Chrome has something similar, use that. Does it? Yeah, that would happen definitely. <laughs> you can, but that would happen definitely. It, Who did not demo his socket.io code today? <laughs> okay, so this is an aside, okay? You get the movie reference? So this movie is also going to release sometime soon. Okay, they're not paying me for all this, okay? It's called Mutse Friendship Karoge. It's actually called Mutse Friendship Karoge. The reason I'm, I'm showing this slide is like, this is very interesting. If you are JavaScript programmers, this is one person you should be aware of. Not the people from that movie, the Bollywood movie, but this guy called Sammy, which is not showing up there now. So, so Sammy was this guy uh, who didn't have a lot of friends on MySpace, and he wanted to be popular. And he's like a kick-ass JavaScript guy, apparently, okay, because he wrote a XSS worm. So uh, he wrote this code, which when his friend visited, got copied to his profile, and when other people visited that guy's profile, they all became Sammy's friend. And he single-handedly brought MySpace.com down, like in 24 hours. And I'm talking about this is before Facebook, okay, when MySpace was big. And people were like using it, at least in the US. So apparently, uh, that's again from his website, that uh, he had, from zero, he had like, uh, okay, from one. You know, as soon as you used to log into MySpace, there was a guy called Tom, who would be a friend. He had a million friends in 24 hours. So, you know, if you're talking about performance and server load, I mean, that's something interesting to look at. He still has the code hosted on his website. And uh, you can, you know. Uh, he was he was afraid that they would get, get arrested, but uh, he's uh, still doing web app hacking. He has this amazing uh, talk called How I Met Your Girlfriend. <laughs> you should definitely watch it. If... If you are, you know, if you're like somewhat interested in security after this talk, you should definitely watch that thing. It's it's brilliant. You agree, right? It was, no, no, he but misused uh, one of the uh, places where you could uh, change the CSS. Right? It was a theme. MySpace allowed themes at one point. So I don't think it was a, a, a request for the No, no, but to, just, to do the yeah. change the theme, you have to do an XSR. No, no, it was allowed. It was a uh, so feature given by them. Your page to change my profile, it's using my browser to do an XSR right. request so that it okay. updates my theme, right? Yeah. So it's, and then the updation of theme is XSS because yeah. then, then somebody else visiting my page will essentially get that. So it is a combination of both. Yeah. But Orkut was never that popular, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so uh, apparently uh, till uh, this guy f uh, figured it out, uh, it was a mythical thing, an XSS worm. That's that's how whatever I understand from this. So in that way, he's like, uh, you know, it was a path breaker, it was very cool. And all he wanted to do was, you know, he wanted some friends, he wanted to be popular in MySpace. <laughs> Yeah. 
and the code is available you can you know actually go through the entire code of his worm it's on his website just search for sammy is my friend or something or i think they sub- suspended his account and he was glad that they didn't uh, charge him and put him in jail or something but he was not allowed to touch a computer for 2 years he was on probation but he came back and they you know then figured out stuff with facebook and then he was like how i met your girlfriend that's when he met the girlfriend okay so jumping to certain conclusions about this javascript can be pretty wild if it shows up in unexpected places one of the things that i wanted to uh, talk about and obviously there are some very qualified people sitting here is that a lot of us don't think about that javascript can have consequences if they turn up in places where they're not meant to you know they're not meant to execute or whatever like uh, injecting javascript where you know you're expecting css to be there so uh, and again it's very powerful the very idea that outside code is allowed execution in the browser is radical and dangerous okay i'm making a very controversial statement because uh, most of your internet websites will stop working your uh, if you do that like if you actually use uh, no script diligently most of the websites will not work uh at least parts of the websites like uh, even google analytics doesn't work if you uh, have uh, uh, no script enabled but in some websites you know you can uh, get away with just enabling parts of the websites past parts of the domains that you trust i am not asking you to start you know distrusting or or start trusting javascript but be aware that this is still code outside okay and uh, apart from the internet or whatever you know you don't really see that happening like you know uh, like there there are these ads for car spare parts where they say that you should not buy spare parts which are not genuine or whatever i mean they say it for a reason right uh well since he's mentioned this there were like uh, three three instances of them finding uh, bugs in that uh, anti accidents why is it better okay i promise i did not plant him there okay <laughs> he's asking all these questions on his own account why is it better but you're trusting Okay I'm going to move on because I just have 5 minutes and I want to like pimp myself. My name is Akash Mahajan I'm a web security consultant. I have a website or whatever. If you have any questions about security or anything generally about JavaScript interesting stuff please feel free to send me a mail. Uh any questions I think we've covered some of it. I don't have a a, a place where you know you can put any user input in my website. I don't have a form on my website. <laughs> It's just a Yeah. That's <laughs> Yep, just the last part. <laughs> It's your dress level. the last part the trivia answer which this guy got uh, there was a theme song that was played every time that guy would walk into pitch with those weird glasses and it said wild thing you made make my heart sing and all okay uh, that's all i have thank you so much please pick up the the feedback forms on your way out thank you